Hello and welcome to this week's CCB Kids Online. I'm Graham and I'm part of the children's team here at Christchurch Beckenham. Over the last two weeks, we've been thinking about night time and more specifically about what God has done in the night time. Last week, we looked into the Old Testament, long before Jesus came to live on earth. We learned that God called Samuel in the night. And because Samuel listened, God was able to do amazing things for the people of Israel through him. This week, we're going to hear a story from the New Testament about a man who went to talk to Jesus in the night. I'll count my fingers down from five. Can you shout his name out before I get to zero? Did you guess? Well, if you got it right, you'd have said Nicodemus. How did you do? Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the, these signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, There is truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are, are old? Nicodemus asked, Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. So what do we know about Nicodemus? Well, the Bible tells us that he was a Pharisee, which means he was a clever Jewish man who knew a lot, terrific lot, about God's law. In fact, he thought he knew just about everything he needed to know about God. He also thought he was a very good person too. I think he was a bit arrogant, don't you? Now we know that Nicodemus had witnessed, or I mean seen, some of the miracles that Jesus had done. He'd seen lame people walk, blind people see, and deaf people hear. And he was curious. The more he thought about it, the more puzzled he became. Surely only God could do things like that. So he decided to go straight to Jesus, straight to Jesus himself, and he decided to go at night time. Now I wonder why he chose the night time. Perhaps he thought there would be fewer distractions, or it might be quieter. But I wonder if it was because he didn't want to be seen going to the house of Jesus a carpenter's son. But one thing we do know is that Jesus never turns anyone away, even in the middle of the night. And that's the same for us. We can talk to Jesus any time, day or night, and he will always listen. Anyway, Nicodemus had some questions to ask but he didn't get the answers he was expecting. Now the Bible tells us only just a little bit of the conversation that he would have had with Jesus. But I guess that Nicodemus had a long discussion about how good he was, how he obeyed the law, how he studied the Bible every day, he taught people about God, and I think he probably told Jesus how much God would love him as a result of it. After all, he was perfect. 
and he certainly didn't want to hear otherwise. But Jesus didn't agree. If Nicodemus wanted to, to go to heaven, he should start again, said Jesus, at the very beginning with his life. The way he was living was all wrong. He needed to begin a new life and leave his pride behind him. He should become like the simplest of Jesus' followers who confessed their sins to John the Baptist. That means owned up to the wrong things they'd done and they thought and be baptised in water. Then the Holy Spirit would come and make a new person. That's what Jesus meant about being born again. But Nicodemus just didn't get it. And I have to say, I can understand why. Jesus explained that just by following the law and being good would never make us good enough for God. Now, Jesus is God, they're one and the same. And he came down from heaven to help us with our sin problem. He knew as he talked to Nicodemus that night that it wouldn't be long before he, Jesus himself, took the punishment for all the wrong things that had been or would ever be done in the world. This wasn't just for Nicodemus but for everyone who puts their trust in him. And that includes you and me, each one of us. Isn't that fantastic? Before Nicodemus went home, Jesus said to him, God loved the world so much that he sent his only son so that all who believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. I wonder what Nicodemus thought as he walked home. Did he understand any of it? Well, there's a clue near the end of John's Gospel, where we read that when Jesus had died on the cross, Nicodemus was one of the people who went to Pilate to ask if they could have Jesus's body so they could bury it. I wouldn't mind betting that Nicodemus was one of those friends who Jesus saw after he was risen from the dead. Perhaps Nicodemus had understood. God loved him so much that he sent Jesus to die in his place to take the punishment for all the wrong things he had done so that he could live with God in heaven forever. What a message to be given in the night. And that message is for us too. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die for us so that we too can live with God in heaven forever. We have a song that reminds us of just that.
Heavenly Father, thank you for our families and the CCB leaders who guide us and teach us each week about your great love for us. Encourage us to show your love to our friends by our words and actions in everything we do. Thank you that you forgive us when we get it wrong, when things we say or our actions are not pleasing to you. Help us to remember that you are always listening and you want us to talk to you, to share how we are feeling when we are happy, to say thank you, to comfort us when we are sad and to reassure us when we are worried. As we start this new week, help us to remember all we have learnt today. Amen. Amen. Well, let's see how you, much you remembered about the story. Like we suggested last week, when I read the questions out, why don't you hit the pause button in between each one and perhaps chat with your, your family about the answers. Perhaps you can help each other. Who was Nicodemus and what did he study? When did he go and see Jesus? Why do you think he chose that time? What did Jesus tell Nicodemus he needed to do to be saved? What things do you need to say sorry to Jesus about? Now perhaps that's something that you need to do quietly in your own room by yourself later. So how did you do? Are you still a bit confused? Well we're going to finish this morning by watching some children explain to you in a slightly different way how they understand the story of Nicodemus coming to Jesus in the night. So I'll see you all next week. Bye. Hey kids, have you ever wondered if there are rules you have to follow to get into heaven? Like maybe God is up there keeping score of how good you are? So if you do something like disobeying your parents, you lose a point? Or if you're nice to your siblings, you gain a point? And that's what today's lesson is all about. A guy named Nicodemus had the exact same question for Jesus. Nicodemus was a Jewish religious leader. The grown-up word for this is Pharisee. Pharisees were people who knew a lot about religion, and they spent a lot of their time studying. They knew everything about the Jewish laws and the Old Testament. Nicodemus was curious about what Jesus was teaching. Nicodemus went to Jesus to ask him a few questions about what he was teaching. After dark, one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. So Nicodemus calls Jesus Rabbi, which means teacher. And he knew that Jesus was someone really special. Jesus told Nicodemus how to become a Christian. Nicodemus thought he had to follow all the laws and never mess up in order to make it to heaven. Jesus told Nicodemus that wasn't actually the way to make it to heaven. He said it was about having a relationship with God. He told him he had to let God do the work to save him. He couldn't do it on his own. And that brings us to an important lesson we can learn from this. The only way to become a Christian is by believing in Jesus. Jesus made this pretty clear to Nicodemus, and it's one of the most famous verses in the whole Bible, memory verse. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God isn't up in heaven just waiting for us to mess up. So he gave us his son, so all those bad things can be forgiven. We can't save ourselves. Only Jesus can save us from our sins. And that's the lesson Nicodemus learned. Kids, if you put your faith in Jesus, you're saved. You can live in heaven with him one day. So have you put your faith in Jesus? If you haven't, but you want to, talk to your parent or teacher today. So next time you think it takes following rules to get to heaven, remember this story. It's not about the rules. It's about Jesus. Jesus.